Well, hey guys, I'm Lynn Hansen. I'm one of the pastors here at North Park Church and super glad to be sharing with you in our life groups this week. Very, very excited about this new series called Deliver Us From Evil. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're just getting started with it. Last weekend was our first installment uh, in our weekend series and now this is our first installment for our life groups. You know, we talked about this. Let's say that you're lost in a strange new world. And what I mean by that is that somehow, some way, you're dropped off on a planet where you're an alien, right? And uh, you're in this strange world and you know nothing at all about this world. You know what you can see, right? But what really scares you, what really makes you nervous is what you can't see. You don't know anything about it. You don't know what's around the next corner. You don't know what's in the next cavern. You don't know what's over the next hill, you know? So what's unseen is really a lot more spooky than what is seen. And that's what we're kind of talking about in this series. Um, when Jesus was teaching on prayer, he said there's about six things that are included in a good prayer. And he kind of gave us an outline. And one of those things that's included in a good prayer, he said, an effective prayer, is lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil or the evil one. So leading us not into temptation, you know, not getting into trouble, not getting into a mess, is in reality effectively dealing with evil. You know, the things that we can't see. And so uh, we need to have God's help with that. We need His deliverance in those things. So the story we're going to talk about this week is, is pointing directly at evil, and it's really a, a powerful, kind of crazy story, to be honest with you. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 to 20, very powerful stuff. Listen carefully, and uh, somebody's going to, from your group, going to want to retell this story from memory afterward as best they can. Everybody else will add in what it is that they might have missed. So uh, listen carefully and kind of try to get this into your head and into your heart. Here we go. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the cemetery to meet him. This man lived among the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night he wandered among the burial caves and the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him and ran to meet him. He bowed low before him. With a shriek, he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion, because there are many of us inside of this man. Then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them into some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on a hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the spirits begged. Let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the entire herd, about 2,000 pigs, plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what had happened. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what had happened told the others about the demon-possessed man and the pigs, and the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been uh, demon-possessed began to go with him, begged to go with him. But Jesus said, No, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things that God had done for him. And everyone 
was amazed at what he told them. All right, guys, somebody again step up and uh, volunteer to uh, try to tell that story from memory as best you can. Everybody else at the end, when they're finished, add in what it is they might have missed. Go ahead, would you please? <coughs> All right, here's some discussion questions, guys. Question number one, have you had a personal experience with evil? And, uh, you know, whatever that might be, just share it in terms of a very short story uh, with the others in your group, please. Go ahead and do that. Question number two, what are... As you read the story, as you pray, as you ask God to help you understand it, what are two or three of the most interesting things that uh, our story teaches about evil? So there's some real truth there in that story about evil that we might not have understood before. What are uh, some interesting things that it teaches you about evil? Go ahead and talk about that, please. All right, now as a group, question three, you know, discuss a few things that you can pick out from our story that differ from what the world generally believes about evil. Can you do that? Can you find some things in the story that are truth and are very different from maybe how the world perceives evil? Go ahead and talk about that, please. Well, this story is, is pure truth. It's from God's Word. God's Word is truth. The whole thing, every little piece of ink is true. So, review question three for a moment. What we said there is, what are a few things you can pick out from the story that differ a lot from what the world sees uh, or knows about evil, or understands about evil, believes about evil. So, you look at that question. How do those truths that we got out of this story change the way you feel uh, or the way that you deal with evil? How does it change things? Go ahead and talk about that, please. <coughs> well, question number five, of course, truth should change us. So if we see some truth about evil that's different than the world believes or that we believe when we're in the world, then obviously, you know, we should change the way we deal with evil, right? So should be some powerful changes going on. And that really has to do with question five. This is the takeaway question. What is it that God wants you to take away from your life group this week? Uh, go ahead and, and talk that over if you would, please. Guys, God bless you. Uh, thanks for being part of a life group. Be excited about this new series. Pray for one another, certainly for our protection as we understand evil a little bit better. And uh, God bless you guys. I will see you soon.